Go in your closet, get baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and get rid of those demons you're carrying. Amen? Praise God. Oh, God is good not only all the time, but in every circumstance. How many of you know he's always trying to make a way of escape for us? Amen? If we're willing to listen and obey. If we're willing to hear his voice. How many of you know hearing the voice of God is vital? Amen. There's too many other voices that float in the atmosphere. In Romans chapter 8, would you go there, please? Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Lord has really been impressing on me lately is that he's really tightening things up. You know, it's not about playing religion, playing church. Amen? We had enough church. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power of God in every area of our life. But the word says, forsake not to assemble. Amen? Why? Because that's where the anointing is released. In assembly. In Romans 8, 12, would you go there, please? Let's speak it together. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Even if you're a Christian? Yes. You just nullified your position. Amen? But if, you, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. Fear. Everyone say fear. Fear brings people into bondage. There's something else about fear. It sets limitations on our life. Fear sets limitations. And I believe God is trying to bring us to a place where we are limitless children. Amen? But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. That's relationship. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, joint heirs with what? The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty called the Christ. So you and I are joint heirs with the anointing of God Almighty. It's the anointing that does everything. That's what puts us in a place of limitless. Without the anointing, we're still bound. You can play all the religion you want. That puts a person into demon management and not freedom. Amen. Joint heirs with Christ, the anointing. If indeed we suffer with him. Now, he's, these are the qualifications. <laughs> suffer. If indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <laughs> Snap. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God that are limitless. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption, which is called fear, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves are groaning within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. In other words, that's the full salvation, the full redemption. You and I are still waiting for that glorified body. Hallelujah. 
You can eat all the food you want. You can cast out every calorie you want to. <laughs> we're waiting for that glorified body. In other words, we're waiting to be freed from this place. That's hope. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says here that... Uh, Verse 24, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That means endurance. Why? Because you're going to be resisted by the enemy in every area. He's going to try and put every limitation on your life. That's his job. And he does it very well. Fear is the greatest limitation in our lives. Fear comes in multiple ways. Forms, shapes, voices, different identities. But the bottom line be behind fear is bondage, limitations. It says in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our what? Our weaknesses. What is a weakness? It's a bondage. Amen? It's a bondage. The word says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Weaknesses are bondages. We don't have weak moments. We have deceived moments. Because Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception and his power is fear. That's how he controls. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. That's why we pray in tongues. You don't need to know what you're praying. He knows what you need to be praying. With groanings which cannot be uttered or understood, because you can't hear them. You don't understand them. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So do you understand that by praying in tongues, you are praying the perfect will of God? So the enemy will try to put a limitation on our life so we don't reach that le uh, level of prayer. So we don't reach that level of God's will. We are calling forth those things that are not by praying in the Spirit. You're getting revelation imp imparted in your spirit, not in your mind. Because the devil knows what you think. So God will not reveal the plan of God to the devil in your thoughts, but he'll put them in your spirit, and in due time, he brings it to remembrance so that you're always a step ahead or multiple steps ahead of the enemy. Amen? See, again, he's trying to tighten things up so we come into a place where there's no more limitations. We are limitless children of God Almighty. That's what separates us from the world. That's what separates us. We're not to be normal. Amen? We don't live a normal life. People may consider you abnormal. <laughs> Amen? Peculiar, strange. They won't understand you because they don't understand light. But that's natural. They're going to hate you and not even know why they do. They hate the president don't even know why. But we are to overcome every attack, every promotion of the enemy, every voice, every thought, every emotion, anything that tries to put a limitation on us. We do not agree with anything. I don't agree with pain. Even when it's a pain in the butt. You can't agree with pain. It will mislead you. Does everybody understand that? These are all the limitations of the world by the ruler of this world who's called Satan who wants to put limitations on us, no matter what. But God has created me and you to be limitless. He says, imitate me. Now, the anointing is what causes a limitless life. Without the anointing, you can't be limitless. It's the anointing that breaks of a yoke of bondage. It sets us free from religion. One of the greatest bondages there is. In fact, the word religion means bondage. Is everybody okay? 
Oh, hallelujah. And verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God, you know when he says to those, I mean, I love God, why isn't it working to the good? Because you're not obeying God. He says, if you'll love me, you'll obey me. Then it will work to the good. And to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son who was limitless that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So you were called, you were justified. To fall in a place and position where the anointing would not only rest on you, but live in you and through you. To make you limitless. Where there is no rule or regulation that can hold you from doing anything. Does everybody understand? You are free. You are free. And when you know who you are in this level of limitless, you're protected no matter what you do. Of course, if it's not, unless it's uh, offensive to the Lord, amen, <laughs> then, then you step out of protection. Again, we are not under the laws and of physical realm of carnality, of flesh. We're not under these laws and rules. Or you can be born again. That's one of the greatest lawbreakers, is to be born again by the Spirit of God. Think about it. Jesus was considered an outlaw. He blew their minds. Even though he set the rules and conditions, he came to change them. He said, I brought a new covenant. And they still wanted to stay in the old. He called that bondage. I've come to set the captives free. Why? Because the anointing that is upon me. God Almighty, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty was now going to be released to anyone willing to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, repent of all their sins, turn their ways, and stay positioned to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Where you live a limitless life, there's no bondage, no management. You're free. The word says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, there's a lot of people that know the truth and are not free. They're not free. Many Christians for all their lives still bound. Why? Because of the lack of the anointing. Lack of assembling. That's what happens with individuals. See, that's the ploy of the enemy. Is everybody Okay. No limitations as limitless children of God. We are free from fear. fear. Fear is bondage. It is the setter of limitations. It's weakness. There's limitations of the flesh, carnal mind. Remember that fear is also a protector. Fear protects and promotes limitations. Fear protects pride. And anger protects fear. So when a person gets caught, they get angry. Because there's such fear. And fear protects pride. And God does not make a way of escape for those who are prideful. But he makes an escape for those who are humble. Fear can awake or alert someone. If you use fear, and fear doesn't use you. Fear can awaken an individual. Amen? It can alert an individual. One of the things fear does is it tries to save the old man all the time. It's a protector of the old man, the flesh. You know, you think about it because fear doesn't want flesh to die. Because he knows that once it dies, it's over with. There's nothing afterwards. But we're a new creation. When our body is history, we just begin. 
So fear gets fed by the flesh, by emotions, by other people. Because it's a spirit. It brings bondage to an individual. It is a promoter of the life of the flesh. And it sets limitations on individuals. <laughs> Again, flesh fights for its life. <laughs> because once deceased, it no longer exists. F fear is no longer there. But as a new creation in the spirit, we should not fear death. Why? Because you and I should welcome it. That's not that we're going to go out and jump off of buildings. Amen? Or step in front of a train or do something stupid. Or commit suicide. But we don't fear death because we know that it's a new beginning for me and you. Finally, I get that new body that's been hanging in the closet for all those years in the storehouse of God. It's got my name on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 7. Eighteen, Romans seven, eighteen. Limitless children. What does it say? For I know that to me that is in my what? Flesh, my old man. Nothing good dwells. Nothing. For to will is present with me, but to how to perform what is good I don't find. Where? In my flesh. There's nothing good in there. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do. That I practice if I'm led by the flesh. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me because sin is the presence of evil. And sin dwells in the old man. But we're to have dominion over it. I find in a law, everyone say law. A law is a rule, isn't it? That evil is present with me and the one who dwells to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, the new man. But I see another law in my members worn against the law of my mind, my thoughts, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin or my flesh, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus the Christ, the anointing, our Lord. So then with the mind, the thoughts, I myself serve the law of God, and with the flesh, the law of sin. Nothing good dwells in the flesh of the old man, in which every level of fear resides. It promotes limitations and attempts to control the new man. That's its purpose and focus. Why? Because it does not want to die. The old man does not want to die, so he uses fear to keep himself active. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 1 and verse 6. Let's speak it. Therefore I remind you to do what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you. How do you stir up the gift of God that's in you? You pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in tongues. Stir up the, God, the, the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. But what? But what? Power. Power. Love. And a sound mind. So, when fear begins to take hold, it puts us in a weak state. We drift from the love of God. People fall into lust instead of love. And the mind becomes confused because the spirit of fear is there. And the word says where there is confusion, every evil thing is there. Amen? So there's no longer a sound mind anymore. Fear put limitations on thoughts, on powers of ability to overcome. Amen? 
and puts a limitation on love. It now take, comes from a survival point of, to, I mean, from a, a point of surrender to survival. And it's all about me now. Survival mode. Survival mode is fear. Person is fighting for their life when we're to surrender it. Amen? Fill will nullify power, love, and the mind of Christ with its limitations. It restricts an individual's identity. It almost strips them. If fear stays long enough, it will strip that person from who they are. And it puts that person back into the world of corruption, rebellion, and bondage. Again, it puts that individual back into the world of corruption, rebellion, and bondage. Many individuals seek their way out through medication, addiction, or many other sorts of lust, work. They stay busy. I, I can't stand when somebody says to me, uh, I, if I don't stay busy, I, I might go out and use again. Well, what the heck? That means you're bound. You're not free. Many people stay that way until death. Unless there's divine intervention. In Revelation chapter 12. How many know oppression is fear? People get oppressed because it's fear. Revelation 12. Oh, uh, yeah, and verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength, salvation and strength, which is power. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows it is a short time. Wow. It says they overcame him by the anointing of Christ. That breaks all limitations of physical understanding. The world has a physical, carnal understanding, but the anointing breaks every part of it. How many of y'all know a miracle is a limitless act of God? But the world tries to make it a limit. They can't get it. It's very difficult for them. Why? Because God just broke every rule possible physically. All physical rules have been broke. Again, when you and I were baptized in the Holy Spirit, all the rules were broke. <laughs> we were brought into a brand new covenant. Well, now the law is in us. No longer are we under the law. We are the law. Does everybody understand that? Why? Through the anointing of God Almighty. That's why he says something very important. Turn to Psalm 149 for a second. Psalm 149. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse 6, Psalm 149, verse 6, it says what? Let the what? 
high praises, not the low praises. Let the high praises of God be in their what? Mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. In other words, that's where the sword is. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the sword is in your mouth. Amen? But he says, let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Why? Because you're making connection with the eternal anointing, the presence, power of God, almighty and truth. And you're, you're refreshing that anointing all the time. See, you and I got to be refreshed all the time. You want to stay connected, you got to be refreshed all the time. He says this now, with the anointing, he says in verse 7, to execute vengeance on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have what? All his saints. All his saints. Praise the Lord. So we are, we are to be an extension. We are the body of Christ. It's the extension of God's righteousness, love, and judgment. Not that we go around judging anybody. Amen. Of course, we inspect. We're fruit inspectors. I'm going to determine whether I'm going to believe you or not by your fruit. Amen. So in this, it's very important because there are areas where how many of you know healing is breaking the physical law? People don't get healed physically in the mind without taking something. Amen? And there's a, healing is a slow process. Miracles are fast. So you may take vitamins and whatever to replenish and get your body back and strength and whatever, but then there's an area where God can step right in and do it all at one time. That's called a miracle. That breaks all the laws. <laughs> so we want to be, don't get me wrong, lawbreakers. Amen? We want to be limitless. What the world says I can't do, I'm going to do. But I'm going to do it through all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, I'm going to do it through all things through the anointing. Everything that we can do is through the anointing. That's why it's so important. That's why too much foolishness in the body is preventing people from being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. They promote rules, regulations, and put people under bondage, but not freedom or management. We don't want management. We want freedom. And it can only come through the anointing of God Almighty. And Mark 16, Many people have gone to church their whole life, tried to be a good Christian, but never saw the power of God, felt the power of God, never cast out a devil, never laid hands on the sick. They'd never seen any of this. But that's what Jesus came to do. We're to imitate him. Amen? We're to be ready in season and out. It has nothing to do with how you feel. In Mark 16, 16, let's speak it. Oh, happy days. Is everybody there? Good. He who what? He who what? And what's the word believe mean? Follow. Don't tell me you're a believer if, you, uh, if you're not a follower. Then you're a liar. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Now, you got to understand something. We are baptized by the blood of Christ when we repent. That is a baptism. It's not about getting baptized in water. That's symbolic. Amen. We're baptized. We're washed by the blood of Jesus Christ when we repent. So every time you repent, you get washed by the blood again. Amen. But there's another baptism that brings power. That's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus explained that to him. And, and he says, so he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe or follow will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow him. In my name they will what? Cast out demons. That's the first thing. It still baffles me that many people don't get this. Who told you that? Why are you acting that way? Why are you rebelling that way? Because I feel like it. Well, who told you that to feel like that? You got a presence of a demon. But I'm a Christian. That means you got more. Because that's where they want to go more. They want to hinder a Christian's life more than they want to 
unbeliever's life. And don't tell me a Christian can't have a demon because we cast them out weekly. Hello. Well, how can a demon dwell with the presence of God? Well, the Word says that we all live and breathe and have our being in God. So demons are here too. Hello? It says that in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That doesn't mean you're going to go and learn another language by going to college. Or what do you call that other thing? I don't know. Rose, what's it called? Rosetta Stone. You're not going to get it through that. Rosetta needs to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. It says they will speak with new tongues. Bakata fa rohosita kaya. And verse 18, and they will take up serpents. Now, you ain't going to go around and dance with snakes, amen? Because you're going to die. You're going to be tempting God. But I love to cut their heads off. I'm a snake hunter. I see a snake, that baby's dead. Why? Because the snake carries a spirit. They are the most cursed animal on the earth. It, it blows me away where there's so many people having snakes as pets. What are you, an idiot? My wife and I got a powerful testimony of that. We went into a friend's house that we haven't seen in a long time. And they had this huge snake in an aquarium. And my wife, we just got reconciled, so she didn't know so much about what was going on. And so he goes to pull out the snake, and I'm going, oh, I, and I'm going, Lord. And my wife wants to pet it. I'm thinking, Lord, what do I do? He said, bind that spirit. I bound that spirit. When she went to go touch the snake, this thing rolled up into a ball. It froze. The Lord said, that's the anointing. Froze. My friend freaked out. What would you do to my snake? I didn't do nothing. He put it back in the aquarium. It still was like a ball. It looked like a bowling ball. I got to pull three holes in it and go on bowling. And... So I called him about two or three hours later. He said, snake still stayed the same way. It wasn't until the next day that the snake was released. Why? Because the anointing. Do you get it? The anointing of God. Look at demons hate the anointing. And so they try to mess with your mind to change your identity. Then you lose sight of who you are. That's why we must be refreshed all the time. Stay filled with the Word, but stay filled with the presence of God. Get into fellowship and worship the Lord where the anointing is. That's where the anointing is released all the time. Then you can take up snur serpents. <laughs> Snurpents. And if you can drink, you can drink anything deadly and it won't kill you. But don't go tempt God. Amen? This is by mistake. You're not going to go siphon your gas tank and drink it. Or drink cyanide. Did you ever see those religious nuts? Those are fruity, nutty, and granola, you know. They're all dancing with serpents, and they're drinking cyanide. Two weeks later, you go back. Where's your mother? Dead. Where's your father? He's dead, too. What the heck? These are crazy people, demonized. Amen? It says, and by no means will it hurt you. They will lay, you will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Believe me, I've drank in things that I thought I was going to die. I had to use the scripture. And it wasn't my wife's cooking or anything like that. She cooks very well. Man, it was something spoiled somewhere. You know, I forgot what it was. What did I just drink? Oh, that was something I made up. <laughs> Lord, I'm decreeing the scripture. Whatever I drink or whatever I eat will but I, <laughs> not hurt me. <laughs> Amen. Did you ever go to a restaurant and you ate something, that, especially like a raw chicken or something? Supposed, I ordered a chicken Caesar salad one time. They gave me raw chicken. I was like, oh, God, Lord, I'm using the scripture right now. I'm decreeing it. Nothing's going to hurt me. Amen. Praise God. So we got to understand that it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God Almighty, that puts me and you into a position as limitless children. Amen. In Mark 7. Hallelujah. And verse 5. 
says, and the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Now, these are the rules of the elders. These are the rules, you know, according to the traditions. These are rules. And Jesus knew about these rules. In fact, he approved these rules. But now, when he created it, now he's come to change everything. See, you got to be willing to move with the Spirit. Amen. Too many people rebuke the Spirit and I don't even know it. So, so what, 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 and they said, what, they, don't, they don't wash their hands. And now, you know, physically we think, well, we got to wash our hands, man. It's, you know, you don't want to be touching something that, you know, you don't know what you've been touching. You want to wash your hands to stay clean. And Jesus answered and said to him, well, did Isaiah prophesy, you hypocrites? As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching of the doctrines, the commandments of what? Men. Rules and regulations of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the tradition of men. The washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father and mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of what? No effect through your tradition which you have handle, handed down and many such things you do. Traditions, rules, laws are held to keep order. Amen. But now the Spirit of God who created all these rules, laws, and so forth have freed us from all the bondage of limitation to obey and follow and surrender to the new sheriff. There's a new sheriff in town. He's called Holy Spirit. Amen. He is the new one. The anointing of Christ. Those led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God Almighty. You know, the first thing we always have a tendency, especially when we get a, uh, a diagnosis from a doctor or whatever, we try to cure ourselves right away. Amen. Instead of going to the Lord, waiting on the Lord. I've been diagnosed with many things, and there were just some things I, went, I wasn't going to accept. And as I stood in that position, God healed me every time. There's a place sometimes where I'd, we get to, I'd rather die than let a doctor touch me. Lord, if you want me to come home, you can take me home or you can heal me. I'm happy both ways. See, he says, deny yourself. Who are you going to really trust? What position are we standing on? Are we limitless children or are we bound by limitations of fear? Don't get me wrong. We have a responsibility to maintain ourselves. Amen? We want to stay healthy. We want to eat right because we're not doing it just to feel better, even though that's one of the results. But we want to fulfill our mission. Less hindrances is better. Amen? It's bad enough we got to deal with all the demonic forces and then deal with our own physical illnesses. It's tough. And First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, if need be. Hmm. You have been grieved by what? Various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, 
that the genuineness of your connection with God, that the genuineness of the anointing that you carry be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time. The Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would come. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering to things which have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Now, this is powerful. He says, I'm going to check out the genuineness of your connection, of your faith, your relationship, and your trust in the anointing of God, your identity in him, your genuineness. Not only your identity in this, all this area which determines your limitations, He's going to check out our genuineness to see where the level of the anointing we're allowing to truly follow God in everything. He checks us out. He tests us. He wants to know how genuine we are in everything. God will allow challenges to come to our life. He'll allow trials and tribulations to come to our life. He wants to know whether he can fully trust us. He wants to know if we're consistent, if we're led by emotional decision or we're led by the Spirit. He wants to check us. He wants to know where we are. These individuals at this time he was talking about, by the Spirit of God, they foresaw, they predicted events that would come, that would come next or even in the future. And they didn't even understand them yet. Many of the prophecies of the old, they didn't even understand. They just spoke it because they saw it. Amen? And John 16. But it says it was given by the Holy Spirit through the anointing. And John 16, verse 12. Limitless children. John 16, verse 12. Jesus said to him, I still have what? I got many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. You can't understand them. You won't be able to receive them because you haven't been filled with the Spirit yet. He said, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, the anointing has come, he's going to guide you into all truth, not by your emotions, not by how you feel, not by how you think, not by how you see, but the Spirit of God is going to lead you into all truth if you let him. But you got to remember, the enemy will put limitations there for being led. Fear is the number one. Fear. Fear will limit a person by, from being led by the Spirit of God. And again, fear comes in multiple ways. He said, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. In other words, he's going to predict things for you. He's going to prepare any attacks of the enemies. He's going to give you strategies. He's going to give you a way of escape. He'll do that for everything. Sickness, bondages, everything. He said, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, this is so powerful. He's going to tell us things to come. So, he's going to allow you to predict something. You know, I... When I'm on my motorcycle, I'm always asking guidance of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because on the bike, 
I've got to foresee anything that can happen around me. I have to predict by the guidance of the Holy Spirit what that person is going to do next to me, in front of me, or behind me all the time on the bike. I must be alert and sensitive. I must have radar all around me, no matter what. So when I move into another lane, that other person from the other lane isn't coming in. Does everybody understand? So we've got to be able to foresee all of these things. Not only do I have to do this physically, when I'm, but it's got to be done spiritually. And everything. We've got to be able to predict what the enemy is going to move on. Or he'll set a limitation. And he's always using fear. 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 In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Is everybody there? In verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because it's a world of corruption. It has individuals in bondage and limitations. Amen? For all that is in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. We've heard this over and over. Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come by which it by which we know that it is the last hour. In other words, the word tells us that there will many, there'll be many doctrines of demons seducing spirits, deceiving spirits that will promote fear. We get a lot of doomsday prophecies, which is not God. Don't get me wrong. Doomsday is not here yet. Amen. There's judgment. God is shaking the world, but the end is not here. He told us all kinds of things would come. But there's always a preparation. Amen. We never know the last day we're giving of our last breath. Amen. But the world, there's still a process of this earth for God to deal with. We still have a thousand years. <laughs> Amen. Of millennium. Before the earth is destroyed. So doomsday is supposed to bring destruction to the world and end of mankind. Well, that's not for a while. Amen. But the Lord will come and judge. And his wrath will come. But the earth will not end. Not until the tabernacle is set up and we have a thousand years of rain. So doomsday is in here. It might be for some individuals, but it ain't here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. Glory. All right, verse 19, that says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you what? And you know all things. Yes. And you know all things. And I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing the Christ. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who tried to deceive you. With what? Fear. But the anointing which you have received from the him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, we don't want to be taught by a man. We want to be taught by the anointing. Amen? 
It's the anointing that teaches me and you. Look, we go through experiences in our life so that the anointing can continue to teach us. We don't look back in the areas of failure because they bring fear. We don't look back on our mistakes. We look in on our adjustments, our corrections. Does everybody get it? We don't look back. We go, for, why? We want to live from the future to the present. Again, the world is corrupt. It's a place of corruption. It has individuals in bondage and limitations, false freedom, false success. How many of you know success can bring a person into bondage? Because the world looks at success of having a lot of money. That's not success. Success is doing the will of God. Amen? They live a life of fear, of loss. They live a life of death, fear of death. They live a life of fear of failure. But the life of the anointing is limitless. We're able to see things through, not fear. We're predicting next moves of our enemies, lead, being led by the Holy Spirit. We know all things that pertain to your circumstances and decisions and choices, keeping us alert and consistent in the things according to be kingdom business. Again, there's people bound in great fear. Great fear. We're to be ready to avoid circumstances. Amen? Avoid them. Why? Because you know, how can you avoid something you don't know is there? You can't. But if we're really in tune, we know what's there. We know. We're not under the law of physical. We're under the law of the spirit. There are things that sometimes I'll do that under the law of the world would be crazy. But I know that I'm covered by the Spirit of God. I know the anointing is there. Because when the anointing is there, I'm not under the law of physical. I'm under the law of the Spirit of God Almighty. That is submission to Him. Not to man, but to Him. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Again, fear brings blindness. Because fear is not light, but it is darkness. What you agree with will, or accept will either accept fear or resist fear. A couple more scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4. So when fear comes, a person can't see things all the way through. The only thing they can see was survival. Me. Ah! Second Corinthians four verse one. Some people have a fear of change. They're not willing to change. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, do not lose heart. Verse two. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. That's sin, transgressions, and iniquities. Not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Remember, we talked about this before, handling the word of God deceitfully. That means everything in this Bible, you're to believe. Or to submit to. Amen? Everything. Anything that we're rejecting here is rebellion in our part. And rebellion will put you in a state of dryness. No matter what you do. Until you turn from it. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose mind the God of this age who is Satan has blinded and do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel of glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, 
and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this earth, this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We're hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Blindness brought by fear. Fear of change. You know, one of the things, uh, you know, I hate not able to see. Amen? We all want to see. Especially when you're driving. You're driving, you get behind a truck. I hate it. I'm going to get out of there. <laughs> or one of these SUVs that's in front of you, it's like, man, get out of my way. I want to see all, I want to get into the path where I can see all the way through and go. So, I, I mean, I, I just don't like being behind tall trucks and moving trucks and tractor trailers or whatever. I want to get out of the way. But before I get out, I got to see. So I got to first see all around me before I can get out, and then I can see all the way through. So there's got to be a process of being able to see out before you can see through. Amen? And that is brought by the anointing. The anointing does not have you jump things. He brings you through a process because he's always teaching us so we can learn. Hallelujah. We're always, he's always trying to bring us to a place where there is a clear view. Everyone say clear view. <laughs> yes. He releases the strategies of his plan. Puts his children in a limitless place where nothing is impossible to those who believe or follow. Amen? He's given us the word that says we can do all things through the anointing of God Almighty. The word says that we are more than conquerors. Amen? That we're blessed every spiritual blessing. That we're seated in heavenly places. We are limitless. Unless you agree with the word limit. And I'm going to close at Revelation 21. Self in an area of survival mode, you know that fear has just agreed with you, or you've agreed with fear. We step out of survival mode and go into surrender mode. Does everybody get it? Revelation 21, verse 1. Limitless children. No limitations. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Anybody want to miss this? <laughs> and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Guess what else? No more fear. Only reverence. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Let me share with you, the anointing makes things new. And he said to me, Write, for though these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes, he who overcomes, what's it going to take to overcome? Cooperation shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my sons and daughters. But the cowardly, well, how does a person become cowardly? Fear. They become cowards. Cowards spiritually. Fear binds them. 
pridefulness is cowards. People that are prideful are cowards. Because that's what it is. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, which is drugs and alcohol, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, all of these which we just spoke are promoted by fear. All of that's promoted by fear. And they ha will have their part in a lake of fire. All fall under the power of fear in bondage limitations and the path of destruction. To be limitless opens the door to new things and new beginnings. And that's through the anointing. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. And we ask you to continue to expose in our lives the things that cause us limitations. Lord, we welcome the anointing of the Holy Spirit to invade every part of our being. To possess us, fill us, dress us, and reconnect us. So that we may be more than conquerors. That we may be sons and daughters that please you. Living a limitless life of freedom and joy and righteousness and peace in the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.